Hey, everybody. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? Feels like, feels like, uh, feels like a Friday today, but it's Thursday. Hello. People asking, what time does class start? Right now. Class starts right now. <laughs> Hey, lots of familiar people, Some maybe some new people in the chat there too. Rosa's here, Rosa, Milena, Paolo, French Leo's here. Hello, hello. <laughs> Array Pendic, hello Muhib, Nish, Nishtha, Rumesa, Ifra. Well, wow, Ifra's getting right to business, wants to know what, what's the topic of the class today. Well, we'll get to that. Okay, so. Yeah, it's a different, a different time than usual, right? Usually, I teach on uh, on Friday mornings, but obviously, um, a little change of plans. I was, uh, I'm not here at the school until later tomorrow, so uh, that's why we're doing it today. Okay, so, um, <coughs> sorry, I didn't mean to cough on you. All right, so anybody who's new or confused, um, hi, I'm Sean. I'm going to be your teacher for the next hour or so. And I am coming to you live from Vancouver, Canada. I am downtown at the Canadian College of English Language. Talcha saying hi to mom. <laughs> Is your mom in the chat? That would be cool. All right. Zaid is here too. All right, cool. Yeah, good to see you guys. Thanks for coming and thanks for for uh, changing the the your your routine a little bit. I know there's nothing there's nothing worse than a Thursday feeling like a Friday because then you still have you, you know you know, it's, it feels like it's almost the weekend but it isn't quite there right. But we'll get through it together. Yeah. Okay. So if it's your first time. Tell me so. Tell me if it's your if you're a first timer. I always like to know who the who the new people are, <laughs> right? And uh, and then we'll get into it. So anybody who is new or uh, kind of forgets, this is an intermediate level class. This is intermediate. People are asking about the time. No, this is just just for this week. Um, this this change next week. We'll go back to um, the regular day of Friday. Nishtha's new? Oh, well, welcome. Cool. Yeah, so this is one, one time only, one shot deal just for this week. Um, right? You're, we're on Thursday. Next week back to normal or back to usual, I should say. Now, Burhan is saying that you're advanced. Well, that is okay. Um, because and anyone is welcome. There are students in the audience. <laughs> we have people here that are definitely higher than intermediate. We have some who are lower than intermediate. Everyone is welcome. And usually even the higher level students um, can sometimes learn a thing or two from going back and reviewing an intermediate level lesson. So we're going to start with some basics, okay. Sophia, you're new here too? Cool. All right, so we're gonna start with some basic stuff and then maybe get a little bit more um, difficult or challenging as the, as the class goes on, okay. So, anybody who's new through, through the class, if you have questions for me, put your questions in the chat and I will answer them as, as often as I can. If the question isn't about today's lesson, I probably won't get to that uh, question. Okay, but you can you can keep trying. <laughs> okay, but don't get don't get angry at me if I don't answer your question right away. All right, so let's get rocking and rolling here, guys. As I said, it's Thursday morning here in Vancouver. This is what we're going to do. Let me go into the main screen here. Don't be alarmed by that. There we go. French Leo gets, you can, you can order your margarita pizza? Well, I'm jealous. 
All right. So um, the last two classes, I think, I kind of started off with a bit of a quiz, a general knowledge quiz, memory tests, these kinds of things, um, to introduce the, the topic for the day. And I'm, I'm going to do something like that today. It's not a speed test. Hey, Julian's here. Hey, how are you? It's not a speed test, okay? It's, but it is a general knowledge. I want to see if you can identify, if you can tell me who these people are, okay? So this one's going to be a little bit tricky, I think, because I'm going to show you a picture of um, four Canadians, all right, in tribute to to my country here, all right, <laughs> Canadian trivia, all right, I'm going to put up four pictures of Canadians, and I want you to tell me if you know who this person is, and if you know what they are famous for. Now, some of them, some of them I will be surprised. You can, this is your chance to really surprise me if you know who some of these people are. <laughs> Okay, so here's, here's the first one. All right. French Leo Canadians are unknown in France. I know this. Don't worry about it if you don't know. Who is he? Can you tell me who he is? Can anyone tell me what his name is? <laughs> All right. And if you don't know, that's fine. But if anyone can tell me who this guy is, <laughs> fitness is Barack Obama. Nope. <laughs> Rosa, you know you know our prime minister. Sure, this is not this is not Justin Trudeau. Okay, he's an actor, <laughs> a girl, <laughs> a girl with long hair. You say it is, it's Zach. Okay, that's that's funny. I'll go back. I'll go to this next one. Speaking of guys with long hair, Ifer says ice hockey for that guy. Yeah, um, who's this guy? Um, do you know? who he is, or can you guess, can you guess what he is famous for? Rudwan, you don't, don't worry if you don't know Canadian celebrities. <laughs> and yeah, you guys are saying this guy's a hockey player? Yes, yes he is, he's a hockey player. <laughs> but who about, who about, what, what about this guy, Michael Jackson? <laughs> yeah, no, this is not Michael Jackson. He's a guitarist. Yeah, right. Okay. So this guy, by the way, um, his, name is, his name is Wayne Gretzky. Okay. He's a famous hockey player. Obviously, he's a hockey player. <laughs> okay. But many people say he's the greatest hockey player in the world, in the history of the game. Okay. He doesn't play anymore, but he's a legend. Okay. You guys can, you guys can discuss that amongst yourselves. <laughs> Red One says, this guy's a rock star. You're absolutely right. This guy is a famous rock star, not just in Canada. Don't worry if you don't know him. His name is, his name is um, Neil Young. Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Bruce Wayne. French Leo Wayne Gretzky. That's right. I think maybe you had a little help from Google on that one. All right. This is, this is Neil Young, a very famous uh, musician from Canada. Okay, again, don't worry about that. Um, do you know who this guy is? The, the answer to this question should be very easy, even if you don't know who he is. You should, you should be able to figure out who this guy is. Steve Lynn, Neil Young, yeah, good for you. Yeah, so some of you guys knew Neil Young, okay. Okay. But what about this guy? Jose Luis got it. Yeah, French Leo got it. Yes, I mean, obviously, <laughs> you should be able to tell me who this guy is. If I say, do you know what his name is, um, his name should be pretty easy to guess. I think, I think you can guess what his name is. Steve Lynn is saying, is he Australian? No, he, is, he was, he was uh, Canadian. He's a Canadian, um, Canadian hero, basically. Right? And do you know what he's famous for? Do you know what he's famous for? His name is Terry Fox, right? Famous Canadian. Now, 
No, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk about get into the Canadian military. But this is yeah, Terry Terry Fox. And he's famous because obviously he had one leg, but he he tried to run across Canada. Canada, one of the um, biggest countries in the world, second biggest country. He tried to to run across the whole country. Okay, so he's a very uh, well known person in Canada. One more, and this is going to make me sad because this one you guys will all know. Do you know who this is? Do you know who this legend of Canada is? Dalinta is saying hello. Hi, how are you? That's right, Rosa is saying that Terry Fox ran across Canada for, for cancer research. Right. And of course, of course, everybody knows Bieber. Everybody knows the Beebs. Yeah? Look at that hair. So dreamy. Okay, so why am I asking you these questions? Right? Not because uh, it matters. I, it doesn't matter if you know who these people are. <laughs> it's, it's fine. I'm asking you these questions because today we are talking about questions. Okay, we're going to be talking about questions. Questions. Life is full of questions. Students have so many questions. So many questions in life, right, to answer. And this is what we are going to look at today. Specifically, today's class out of Unit 11 in 120, okay, um, <clears throat> is on indirect Indirect questions is today's lesson. Okay, um, so let's get into it. Okay, this is what we're talking about today. But to begin, I just want to again. I, I, I said at the beginning, I want to start um, very basically. Okay, I want to start at the basics. Okay, um, with the simple stuff. Question words, never, <laughs> never ending questions. <laughs> right. All right. So question words. When you think of question words, we're thinking about things like who, why, when, where, how. Are there any other question words that I haven't thought of? You've got which and whose, right? When, when people say question words, we're kind of talking about these, these W words, right? With, of course, except for how. How's an H? Okay. The WH family, you guys are saying. Right. Exactly. The W questions. Good. So, <coughs> you guys know the question words who and when and what and, and where. But I thought I would take a quick minute before we get into the harder stuff to look at the basics and to talk for just a minute about <coughs> these three question words and maybe one more, okay? Um, because uh, sometimes there's some confusion. Sometimes students have questions about these questions, right? Sometimes students confuse what and which. So I just wanted to talk first about that, okay? So what and which, what's the difference? Well, sometimes Sometimes they're the same, okay? In many cases, when we're asking a, a question with which or what, you can, you can use either one, and there's very little difference, if any, in meaning, okay? Oftentimes, we can, we can use both, okay? Now, obviously, both of these words um, are usually before a noun or sometimes a verb, but oftentimes, most, most often with, with nouns, okay? How long is the class? Yeah, this is one hour, roughly. Okay. You guys are, oh, are you practicing your questions, saying, what is your name? <laughs> okay. All right. So, the main difference between which and what is that which we usually use if there's a limited number of choices, right? If we're looking at just a, a a few things or a limited number of things and we're trying to to decide on one then we use the word which what 
usually is used for, for broader, larger categories. Okay, you guys still talking about Justin Bieber over there? <laughs> okay, for example, we say, what, what kind of pasta did you eat? What kind of pasta did you eat? If it's kind of an open question, right? If there were only two kinds of pasta, you would probably say, which, which kind of pasta did you eat? That's kind of, that's the preference, right? Which, which university is best? What is the best university? Exactly. In this case, fitness, fitness Lynn, is, that's, a good, that's a good example because I think both of those would be okay in questions. Hiding Love Natty is asking what happened. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened. What type of music does she play? Right? So there are so many different kinds of music. But again, you get a little bit more specific and you say which way should I go? Not what way. What way should I go? Sounds a little bit strange because you have only a few choices. You're like, you're like this? This helps you to understand my, my hands here? Yeah? <laughs> Rum, Rumesa is, is saying, can we use kind of with which? Which kind of? Which kind of? Sounds a little bit weird. I think, I think what kind of is, is far better, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you will, you will hear people use it, for sure. Yeah. Which, kind of, which kind of peoples like rice, C. Joy is saying, yeah. Exactly. There you go. I would say it's fine, but more commonly, you will hear people say, what kind? Okay. Also, which, which desk is yours? Which flavor of ice cream do you want or what flavor of ice cream do you want? Exactly. So, as I said, these are basically the same, but the preference is usually if there's a small number of choices, we use which. Okay? Good. Okay. Now, whose is used when we are talking about possession, right? Whose? Like mine, something is mine or yours. So we say, whose glasses are these, right? Whose glasses are these? Or whose house is next to yours? <laughs> I don't know where this lovely little, little village is, but... See, Joy's a little late, that's okay. That's fine. Okay, so again, this is just a little, a little intro talking about these specific question words because we're, today we're going to be talking about using these question words um, in a different, in a slightly different way than this. Fitness Lynn is saying mine, right? Whose house is next to yours, right? My cousins. It's all about possession, right? Now, one more thing, and then I'm going to get you guys to do a little bit of uh, practice for me right at the beginning, is how, okay? Now, which um, what and whose are usually followed by nouns, right? Um, which and what can be followed by verbs as well. But how is followed by adjectives or adverbs? Yeah, French Leo, you're asking what, what's the borderline on the number? Yeah, I wish, I wish it was that exact. I wish there was a clear answer on, on if it's 29, use which, and if it's 30 or more, use what, but, but we don't really have that. You kind of have to, you have to feel it out, right? Um, for example, like which kind of ice cream do you want, or, or which, which countries, which countries would you like to visit, right? Or what countries would you like to visit? It, as I said, in that case, really you can use either one, but I would say just if it's, if it's a very small number, I would go with which rather than what. Okay? But I wish there was an exact uh, scientific response for that, but there isn't. You just have to, you have to feel it, French Leo. <laughs> so how with adjectives and adverbs? We say how, how far, right? How far is Whistler from Vancouver? How adorable is Justin Bieber? <laughs> Colwinder says, that's not me saying that, right? He is pretty adorable, though. Paolo, how interesting is your life? If you're asking me, I think it's, it's pretty, pretty interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, how far is it? How much did you pay? How, how often 
Do you go to the movies? These adjectives are adverbs. How far is the airport? Right. How quickly, this is an important question, how quickly can you run? How bad was your accident, Asala is saying. Hopefully not too bad. How frequently do you watch smart classes? Right. This is good, 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 good. So this is, this is the difference. Which, what, and whose with nouns, how, um, typically with adjectives and adverbs. <laughs> yeah, you guys, are, you guys are crazy, but that, that's cool. Okay, we're on the right track. Now, oh, before we get into that, again, I just want to make sure that everybody is on the same page here, that everybody's following along, that everybody's comfortable with this. How brilliant are you? Are you asking me? Not, not super brilliant. <laughs> All right, so just to make sure, we're going we're gonna to ease into this. Keep it, keep it light for now. Keep it easy. Yeah? I'm going to go up here. And <clears throat> I'm going to go full screen. I'm going to take, I'm going to go off the screen for about, I don't know, one minute, 60 seconds, guys. And I just want you to tell me what question word should go here. Okay? For each sentence, put in a question word. We're keeping it simple. And then we're going to get a little bit more challenging. Okay? So, for A, what question word would you put in there? Put your answers in the chat. Okay, put your answers in there. Make sure to put the, the letter next to it. So A and then your, your answer so that I can see which one you're, you're answering. Okay, so I'm going to disappear because people are already putting their answers in there. I'm going to put the music on. Um, get to work. I'll be back. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Lots of, lots and lots and lots of answers on the chat. This is great. So, pick a question word and finish the sentence. Finish the question. Let me, let me go through here and, and pick, some, pick some answers. So, the first one, Delinta. Delinta says A should be which. And I agree with that. No, ooh, not K okay there. Wick. Which? Street should I take? I mean, if, if someone asks the question, What's, what street should I take? There's nothing wrong with that question. But I think, as Delinta says here with, with A, I think the best answer is which, because there are two options, right? Georgia or Robson. These are two, two main streets in downtown Vancouver. Um, actually, the school is just right between these two, these two streets, basically. So which street should I take, Georgia or Robson? I think is, that's the best answer for that one, for sure. Good stuff. All right, what about B? 
Interesting. Okay, so some people are saying which. Like, which code is that? Now, yeah, technically, I mean, you could, in the right situation, you could maybe say which code, which code is that? Maybe. It's a bit of a stretch, though. We'd have to, to kind of make up a story to, add, to, to kind of explain why we would ask that question. I think um, Diari said for, for B, whose? Whose coat is that? Is probably the most common question. Which coat is that? Um, may be possible in some strange situations, but it's, it's, it's possible. Okay, but I think, yeah, Diari's right with whose coat and Rosa, you got that one too. So did Patricia, good stuff. So C, kind of pasta did you eat well? That one looks familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So red one for, for C, oh no, sorry, I was looking at B, Nishtha says what? Yeah, and if, if somebody said which, which kind of pasta did you eat? That's fine, again, if there's a limited number of, of pastas available. Okay, it is possible to say both. Rajan says, "Please speak my name, Rajan. If I speak your name, do you do you appear <laughs> yeah. behind me? Yeah. All right. What about? Okay, some of some of the answers don't have letters next to them, so I'm not sure which which one you're answering here. Always make sure to put the letter next to your answer so that I can see." which sentence you're answering. Other, otherwise, I just have a whole bunch of what's. This is, it's raining what and which here. <laughs> right. All right, what about D? Who's got one for D? D, 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 D. Somebody new, somebody different, who I haven't picked on yet. Bharat says which. Which country are you from? Which country are you from? That's fine. What country are you from? Which country are you, are you from? Either one is acceptable, I think. Colwinder for E is saying which, which color, which color do you like? Now again, for this one, which color do you like? It's, it's definitely possible. It really depends on what we call context, right? It depends on, on the conversation, the situation, right? If I'm just talking about all colors in the rainbow, I would probably say, what color do you like? Because there are so many colors. If you go to, I don't know, go to the paint store and look at all the different shades of color, there's so many. With which, I would say, which color do you like? If you're looking at a couple, you're trying to decide what, what color do we want Right? What color do we want for the bedroom? Or here's three colors. Which of these three do you like? Okay. Fanny France is saying hi. Hello. <laughs> yeah, and Fitness Lynn is saying what? Yeah, right. We said what? What country you're from is, is fine for that one as well. <laughs> okay. That's what I mean. So. Really, the, the whole point at the beginning is me saying that what and which are often both possible, right? The same thing with F. We're saying what, what city do you live in, I think, is, is probably more common than which city do you live in, but which is, is, is fine, too. Okay? Good. And then G, H, and I. Yeah, sorry, Stacy. We're not we're not talking about essays today. <laughs> Maybe next time. All right. So, what do you guys have for G? There's so much stuff coming in on the chat. Here we go. Rosa. Everybody says how. Yeah. Basically, how is here. Well, I should have I should have mixed these up a little bit a little bit better. I think. How many times have you flown on an airplane? How heavy is your bag? And I. Yeah, everybody got that one too, right? Because again, well known is an adjective. So, how well known is the singer in your country? How well known is Neil Young in your country? When we think about those four Canadians that I put on the screen at the beginning of class, I would say, how 
well known? Asa oh, good question. Good question coming from Asala here. She says, can we, see, can we say how, how much, how much well known is the singer? Good question, Asala. Thank you for that. But the answer is, the answer is no. You can't do that. Because remember with the word much, you're going to follow much with, uh, I mean much is a, is a quantifier, right? So you're going to follow much with some kind of, um, usually a, a noun or another verb, right? So if you say how much money do you have or how much do you make at your job, right? But you can't say how much and then an adjective, really. How much happy, right? How much hungry? How much hungry are you? No, how hungry are you, okay? <coughs> Oh, Paulo's asking about in which. Now, in which, that's a whole complicated lesson that we could do on in which. And actually, I, I did, there is a video on in which in the, in the playlist about adjective, adjective clauses. That's pretty advanced. See Joy saying the same thing. So here, no. Definitely, guys, you, you, these are good questions. You cannot, you cannot say how much heavy. No. Because um, for the same reason as well known, much followed by um, a noun or, or uh, a, a verb. Okay? All right, good questions, guys. All right, so that's only the beginning. Let's get into the main meal here. Okay? That was just the appetizer. <laughs> Maybe it's not a good idea to talk about meals and appetizers with this guy, with this guy looking at you, okay? Now, Jose Luis is saying, where city do you live? No, no, just where do you live, Jose? That's a good question, too. That's a good question, because um, Typically, in, in a question like that, you're not going to follow, don't follow where with that noun, right? Where do you live? Where do you work? What city? What building, right? How useful are these classes? <laughs> I hope that's an example and you're not just asking that question. Well, that's a good question. How useful are these classes? I don't know. You guys talk about that. <laughs> All right. So. Today we're talking about indirect questions, indirect questions. So we're going to take that which, what, those, those, those question words and we're going to um, get a little bit more, a little bit more advanced, yeah? Get away from that, that basic stuff. So the first, the first question, right, the first question is, what is an indirect question? Or maybe I should ask, could you tell me what an indirect question is? <laughs> Can you tell me what an indirect question is? Well, this is an indirect question, okay? Could you tell me what an indirect question is? This question about indirect questions is an indirect question. He blows everybody's mind on the internet. He just blows the internet's mind, just like that. <laughs> so what am I talking about? What has, what, Sean's going crazy here. What, what is he talking about? So when we start a question, Louise is saying embedded questions. Yeah, right. When we start a question with something like, could you tell me, do you know, um, do you happen to know? That one's a kind of a tricky one. People are sometimes confused with the word happen there, but do you know and do you happen to know, same, same meaning, okay? Rosa is talking about noun clauses, yeah, that's right. Okay, so could you tell me, do you know, do you happen to know, do you have any idea, uh, do you remember, can you guess, um, would you mind telling me, right? All of these <clears throat> types of questions are, are what we call indirect questions, 
okay? And this is what we want to focus with today because they are a very common place where students make mistakes with word order. Aha, uh -huh. now, yeah, Sophia is asking kind of, is it, is it like suggesting or implying? It's, when we say indirect, Sophia, that's, that's a good question. Sometimes we mean indirect, meaning people don't say what they want to say, right? But when we're talking about grammar with indirect questions, it's a little bit um, s more, more, more straightforward than that. It's not really about, about going around so much. It's j really just about the structure of the sentence. Right? So let me, let me explain here. Okay, let me show you an example. Rose is saying, can you guess who is going to win the mistake of the week? Right, so direct questions, what time is it? Right, that's a direct question. Think about at the beginning of class, I showed you pictures and I said, who is this? What's his name? Why is he famous? Right, what time is it? This is a direct question. This is your, your standard, normal question that you would ask, okay? Indirect questions, the structure is a little bit more advanced, right? And we say, could you tell me what time it is? Okay, could you tell me what time it is? What time is it? Could you tell me what time it is? Again, at the beginning of class, the whole point of me asking you about Wayne Gretzky was that I said, can you tell me who this is? Do you know what Terry Fox is famous for, right? These are indirect questions. Hey, Yara's there. Hey, long time no see. How are you? Amazing teacher, uh, amazing student. All right. So this guy has a question. His question is, when and why should I use indirect questions? Why should I say, could you tell me, can you tell me, um, do you know, right? Mabuber, Mab Mabuber Raman, you're in Florida? Cool, welcome. Can you tell me what time it is in Florida? Right, indirect questions. <laughs> All right. So, why should you use <coughs> an indirect question? Or maybe I should say, Sean, would you mind telling me when I should use an indirect question? Could you tell me how to get to the library? Rosa says, right. Because indirect questions sound a little bit softer and more, more polite. So sometimes, especially we, we Canadians like to be polite, right? So sometimes direct questions can sound a little bit hard, a little bit harsh, right? You ask a stranger, what time is it? What time is it? Is, it, comes, it sounds a little bit rude, a little bit impolite. Could you tell me what time it is? Sounds, it sounds nicer, right? Hmm. Delicious. <laughs> okay. So, the main issue that students have with indirect questions, we use these questions all the time in daily life, and the mistake that students make is usually with word order. We get a little bit mixed up with the word order um, of these indirect questions, all right? Um, it's a very common thing, and that's why we're talking about this. So, typically, as you know, when you, when you ask a question, the word order is inverted. We use inversion, right? Which means the helping verb, the auxiliary verb, right, like can or will or, the, or be, comes before the subject, right? Can you swim? Will you help me? Right? This inverted word order. Yeah? And even with the question words, like what um, time should I arrive, right? This inverted word order. Now this is where students get a little bit tripped up. With a direct question, you say, where is she going? Bharat is saying, yeah, you don't use direct questions with your boss? Yeah, I mean, it de well, it depends. It depends on the question. How are you is a, is a direct question, and that's okay. 
right? It really depends on the situation. I'm not saying that direct questions are always impolite or always rude, but sometimes they can, they can be a, a little bit too harsh. Where is she going? There's nothing particularly rude about that, right? But if you want to make it an indirect question, right? We have to think about the word order. Now, in a, as I said, in a regular direct question, the helping verb is comes before the subject she, right? You've got your question word and then helping verb, subject. All right. Some of you guys are already putting the answer in the, in the chat. That's great. Indirect questions are a little bit different. So you start with, do you know, right? And you'll notice that in the indirect question, you still have, you have that inversion, but it, the inversion's here, right? Do you, right? There's the, there's the helping verb, and there's the subject. Do you know, right? Now, that direct question here, starting with where, right, the order has to change, because there's your inversion here. Do you know where she is going. Now look at the difference there, right? Because where she is going, this part of the sentence isn't, that's not the question anymore, right? The question is, do you know, right? And that's where students get a little bit tripped up. And Mikhail is, is ahead of me there, right? Do you know where, ah, not, good, no, okay. So not do you know where is she going, that's good. Do you know where she is going? Exactly. Mikhail, good. And that's exactly why we're talking about this, because students make this mistake all the time. Can you tell me what time is it? But that's, that's a mistake. You can't say that. Okay? All right, let me show you another example. Direct question. When was the baby born? When was the baby born? Right? This is a direct question. Oh, they had a baby? Oh, when was the baby born? And again, there's nothing impolite about this, this question. It's fine. And there's your helping verb, and there's your subject, right? And, of course, you've got the question word at the beginning. Maybe I should turn it into my laser pointer. There's your question word there, okay? Now, for indirect, good. Steve Lynn's ahead of me there. Good, good for you. Where's my, there we go. Do you happen to know, right, very, very polite. Do you happen to know, and there's your inversion there, do you? Do you happen to know when the baby was born? So your word order is just like a statement, right? The baby was born yesterday. So in, think about it like this. In the indirect question, the answer and the question will have the same kind of word order. Do you know when the baby was born? The baby was born last week. Okay. Good, 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 good. Fitness Lynn is just saying, happen to know. Yeah, that's just fancy. Yeah, I'm just trying to be fancy here. Teach you something, teach you something cute, right? Hey, Omar. Good to see you. Fanny's Fran Fanny Francis saying, why did I add happen? Like, do you know or happen to know? It's, it's, <clears throat> sometimes we ask, do you happen to know? Um, maybe when we're, when we're wondering, maybe it's, it's unlikely we don't, we're not expecting the person to know the answer. Um, but really it's just, it's just meaningless. It's, we, <laughs> <laughs> in English, sometimes we use words that have no, no need, right? <laughs> There's, they're not necessary in the sentence at all, right? Do you know, do you happen to know? Exactly the same. Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. Could you tell me? Yeah, Michaela is saying, could you tell me when the baby was born? Perfect. Exactly. So let me show you one more example, all right, and there you'll see the difference in word order. Okay, one more example. And now here's the, here is the indirect question, right? Could you tell me who I should speak to? Now, in this situation when you're dealing with 
uh, a problem with an airline or in a business or something, this is when you, sh you can be using these indirect questions, right? Could you tell me who I should speak to? There's your inversion, could you, right, tell me who I should speak to? So the subject comes before the modal verb there. Okay, now the <clears throat> more direct version of that would be, where, where is it? Yeah, who should I speak to, right? Who should I speak to? And there you've got that regular question inversion there. <laughs> so Devinder's saying like, to whom should I speak? Yeah, okay. You, you could say that if you want to be formal. Talking to the queen. <laughs> yeah, when you're speaking to the queen, maybe. Radwan, you've been using, yeah, it's a very common mistake. Yeah, this is exactly why we're doing it. Sophia thinks politeness, politeness is important. I agree. Um, politeness, uh, you know, how you say something um, can get you a long way, right? Sometimes people say it's, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it, right? That's what we say, so. Can you tell me whom I should speak to? Yeah, right. Or can you tell me to whom I should speak? Bharat, if you want to be really, really formal. Okay, good. Now sometimes students, this gets a little bit trickier when you're using do, does, and did, right? Because as you guys know, when you're asking, when you're creating just a, a simple question um, <clears throat> with the word do, how often does the bus come, right? We often use that, that word do if there's no um, helping verb. If there's no auxiliary or modal verb in the answer that we're expecting, we use do, right? Like, do you like Sean? <laughs> Don't answer that. That's fine. Say it with flowers, Rosa said. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So how often does the bus come? is a typical question. Now again, th when, you're, when you're creating the indirect question, think about it the way you would answer this question. You say, the bus comes every hour, right? Or every 15 minutes. The bus comes every 15 minutes. So, when you're going from direct to indirect, remember that you've got to drop that helping verb, does. If you look at my indirect question, could you tell me how often the bus comes? You notice that I took the verb do, that helping verb, out of my sentence. And I've said, could you, right, there's your inversion, could you tell me how often the bus comes, right? Subject and verb. In this case, you're using that main verb, right? There's no helping verb. Right. Do you know how often the bus comes, Jerry said. Exactly right. Perfect. And again, you'll notice that in the direct question, we're conjugating that helping verb, right? We're putting the S on the ES on do. Does the bus come? But in the indirect question, we're putting the S back on the on that um, main verb. We're conjugating that main verb. Okay? That's another area where students kind of sometimes make that mistake. But again, with indirect questions, just always think about the answer. Good, guys. Good stuff. All right. Let me show you another one. What time did they leave? Now, this is in the past tense with the verb did, right? With that helping verb. What time did they leave? When you turn that into an indirect question, you're going to have to watch that tense because you're going to lose that helping verb, right? Because you're going to say, do you know what time they, who can finish that question for me, right? Do you know what time they, and again, remember, whoop, <laughs> whoops, I gave the answer away, left, right? Past tense. Because remember that this, is, this question is past tense. There, there's the past tense in that helping verb, right? What time did they leave? But in the indirect question, because you lose that verb do, you're only using that main verb, that main verb has to be past tense, what time they left. 
Because again, if I say what time did they leave, your answer is going to be they left at 10 o'clock. Okay? Again, if you guys have questions, shout them out there. Rod one, yeah, close, but remember that leave is an irregular verb. So it's left, left, left. Jacob Smith says left. All right. Cool. Okay, how about one, one more? And this, is, again, is a good example of, of kind of being polite. Why did you do that? <laughs> when you notice somebody at work or in school made a mistake or did something strange, you say, why did you do that? Well, that can sometimes sound a little bit harsh, right? A little bit unfriendly. So how can we soften it? But again, I'm showing you this example because sometimes we use do as the helping verb and the main verb, right? Do you do? What do you do, right? So just don't get mixed up with that when you're creating this indirect question. So Yara is saying the problem is that I'm Spanish. If you, if you say do you, it's more direct. You mean with the indirect question, Yara, just to clarify? Yeah, right. And you guys, M. El Musa. Bavian Yaldo. Yeah, you guys are you guys are nailing it. Perfect. Right. So you would say, would you mind telling me? I'm just going to use that one. Some of you are saying, can you tell me? Or um, something like that. Would you mind telling me why you, right? Because we're taking that did away, right? We're taking that helping verb away in that indirect question. Would you mind telling me why you did that? Now, here, did, that's the main verb here, okay? Why you did that. Tell me why you did that. Yeah, right, good one. Fitness Lynn, perfect. Yeah, I mean, this is... Again, Yara is saying it and, and other people are saying it. This is a very common um, mistake that um, Spanish speakers make, uh, Latin, Latin speakers make this mistake, lots of people. Um, I think maybe, this, this is universal. I think everybody uh, that learns English makes this mistake of, of the word order and says, would you mind telling me why did you do that? Tell me why did you do, well, would you mind telling me why did you do that? Wow, it's hard for me to even say. <laughs> Fitness Lynn is asking, how do I answer that question? Would you mind telling me why you did that? Uh, the answer is, um, because I thought it was okay or something. I mean, you, the question of why is usually answered with a because. It may be just because. Would you mind telling me why you did that? Just because or to make you angry, something. You could say anything. Johnson Silver is saying, could you tell me what time it is at your country? Oh, almost perfect question, Johnson Silver. But you wouldn't say at your country. It would be in your country. And it is 9.53 a.m. Thursday morning. May I know? Sure. Yeah, that works, Devinder. Okay, so how about this? Um, let's do some practice. I want to see what you guys can do, okay? So I'm going to hop out here, and if you guys have more questions, ask them. But again, we're, we're going to keep it um, pretty straightforward, I think, and really just focus on the structure here, okay? So you've got eight sentences here. 1023. Are you sure? How is that possible? <laughs> so you've got eight sentences, or eight questions, I should say. What are you going to do after school? Have you decided? Well, I guess we didn't really ask, we haven't seen that question, but have you decided? That's a good question. Have you decided what you are going to do 
after. School question mark. Have you decided what you are going to do after school? Right? So you have to make sure that that word order goes back to your, your typical order for, for the statements. Okay? So finish the indirect questions. All right. Lazar Lopez, are you in Florida as well? We've got a bunch of Floridians in there, do we? Cool. Okay. How about this? So I'm going to, I'm going to disappear from the screen, okay? And I would like you guys to cre uh, <laughs> create, not create, finish the indirect questions. Take the direct question and make it indirect, okay? I'm going to disappear and put the monkey music back on. Get to work and put your answers in the chat. I'll be back in a couple minutes. Go for it. Do, 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 do. All right, I'm back. Good stuff. Lots of good, good, good stuff coming in in the chat. Lots of answers. I uh, forgot to turn the music on. Well, no, I was listening to the music. I had the music cranked here in the studio, <clears throat> and I was snapping my fingers to the beat, but I just didn't turn on the speaker for you guys. I was being selfish. I apologize. <laughs> I know how much you guys love that tune. Just get it stuck in your head all day. Or maybe even all night. If you're watching this at night, you probably 
close the computer and then you just hear that song in your head. All right, so let's go over some of these answers um, together here, gang. B is, where did you leave your keys? Where did you leave your keys is the direct question. And we'll go to <coughs> M. Al Musa. And Fanny France, you guys, you guys had the same answer. You said, do you remember where you left your keys? Do you remember where you left your keys? I think I put two spaces there. Maybe I'll even make that a little bit bigger. There we go. So do you remember where you left your keys? Right? You're getting that um, the past tense on left, and you're taking did out of there. Get it out of there. So what about C? And obviously, if you guys have questions about my answers, put them, put them in there. And don't worry if you didn't completely finish. <laughs> All right. I know we kind of truck along pretty easily, or pretty, pretty kind of quickly, right? Because we're um, low on time here today. All right, what about C? How much did you spend yesterday? Could you please let me know? Yeah, Colwinder and Thrushara, I think I have the same answer. So you said, could you please let me know how much you spent yesterday? Question mark. Whoa, I don't know why I did that, but there. <clears throat> there. So how much you spent yesterday, if you said how much money you spent yesterday, that would be okay as well. Okay, Colwinder saying why did is removed. Um, uh, which, which letter, Colwinder, are you asking about? If it's this one, it's because this is a helping verb, right? But in the, in the indirect question you take, you take do out as that helping verb, right? Okay, what about D? Now D, I made a mistake. I should not have included D because D is what we're going to be talking about a little bit next week. Now some of you kind of, yeah, some, a lot of you figured it out anyway, right? And said, do you happen to know, we didn't talk about this today, but if she can speak Spanish, right? We didn't talk about if. Now some of you are putting weather in there too and you're going to say, oh Sean, Sean, can I put weather? Is weather and if the same thing? And uh, you'll have to wait until next week to know the answer to that, okay? <laughs> next week we will talk about if weather and if are the same, all right? Or whether or not they are different. All right, what about E? Whose laptop is this? The indirect question. Coming from C-Joy. Yeah, you got it. Whose laptop this is? Do you have any idea whose laptop this is? Good, and Milena, you got it too. Good for you. Paolo, you got it too. All right, so three more here. Who do you admire the most in history? That's a hard question. You guys can, you can discuss that in the chat, right? Would you mind telling me who? Who, who, who? Who's got the answer? Barat. Yeah, you got it. Um, who else? Jerry, you got it too. Who you admire, right? Um, would you mind telling me who you admire the most in history? Why is that doing that? That's irritating. <laughs> All right. 
So, obviously the answer is Sean, but that's, that's a given. That's an easy question. Okay, G, how far is it to the park from your school? Two more here, and then we'll move on to something else. Rosa, you got it. Good for you. Not sure how I feel about those shorthand U's you're using, though. <laughs> Do you know how, whoops, how, whoa, how, there we go, how far it is to the park? Man, I can't type at all. From school, question mark. Do you know how far it is to the park from school? And the last one. Oh, and somebody's saying for E, do you have any idea to whom this laptop belongs? Now, to whom this laptop belongs for this one, you can say that. But it might sound like, some, in some situations, if you say to a classmate, do you have any idea to whom this laptop belongs? It's grammatically correct. It's wonderful. It sounds like you're trying to sound a little bit too, too smart, though, maybe. <laughs> If it's a casual situation, I, I wouldn't bother saying that, but that's up to you. Do you happen to know if, whether, and if are the same, Jerry says? <laughs> All right, now what time did the sun set last night? Do you remember, I'm going to do this one, what time the sun set last night? Right. So yeah, lots of examples of us taking that helping verb of do out of there, right? Do you remember what time the sun set last night? And Vivex here. Cool. All right, guys. So um, this is, that's about as far as I want to go this week with indirect questions. There's, there is more to learn. There's more to talk about, and um, including if and whether. And next week... Uh, We'll talk more about um, kind of the why. We'll look a little bit closer to the, the grammar behind the indirect question structure to try to kind of not just to show you how to do it, but so you understand why it's like this, okay? So because it is, it is kind of complicated, right? But we'll, uh, I think it's, it's good to spend at least two classes on this because as I said it's a very common uh, problem area for students not a huge problem because usually even if with that word order being flipped around um, you, you can still understand what the question is but it's still important to try to fix that up okay Barada saying is it possible to say how long um, Sure, but I don't know what I don't know what question you're you're looking at there, Bharat. Okay, now of course we can't go anywhere without first doing everybody's favorite. Well, no, forget about that. We'll talk about that next week. Oh, <laughs> that was the <laughs> that was the slowest transition. Get out of there! What's going on? Okay, well, that's fine. We'll leave that there. Mistake of the week. <laughs> All right. Mistake of the week. All right, I'm going to put a sentence up here. Basic one. Yeah, Steve Lynn, to your question, I would still put a question mark there. Okay. And yeah, Alice, you've got to say whose laptop this is. Yeah, but I think JB, JB87 is helping you out there. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to put a sentence on the screen, and I'm going to disappear for 10 seconds, and I want you guys to find the mistake. Okay, common little mistake. Um, and uh, whoever finds it the, the fastest, whoever finds it first is the champion of the world for this uh, Thursday morning. Alash is saying it's, it's yeah, well, Alash is saying 
that English learners see it as very complicated, natives see it as a second nature. Well, we see it as second nature because um, we grow into it, Alash. I think it's important to, to mention that if you start asking questions to the average English speaker, a native speaker, about the why, the grammar, they, will, they won't even, most people won't even know what you're talking about if you say direct or indirect question or the word order, inverted word order of subject and verb. The, the average, I would say the average native English speaker has no idea about, about that kind of stuff. They just speak it because they grow into the language. They don't know why. They just, they just do it. Yeah? Okay, C. Joy is going to be the champion. So, here we go. This one's, I think this one's, I kept it kind of simple today, maybe. Whoever finds it first is the champ. Okay, so I'm going to put the sentence up here, find the mistake. Here we go. Oh my goodness, good stuff. You guys were fast on that one. Now, the, the interesting thing about what I was just saying about uh, to Alash and that comment is that this mistake, you guys who are uh, English learners, you find it like that. You find it so quick, but the mistake that I put here today seems so simple to many of you but this is a mistake that native English speakers make all the time. Myself included, probably, if I'm, if I'm writing a text message quickly or an email, it is possible that even someone as amazing as me <laughs> makes this mistake occasionally, right? Um, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not me. Yeah. Other people. Other people. Yeah. Okay. So, you guys found it. And I believe, who's the, who's the champion of the world? Madiha Faruqi. Madiha Faruqi is the champion of the world and even the universe, I might even say, because you found the mistake, which is your, right? Real simple little mistake, but people make it all the time. Steve Lynn, you were just, uh, just behind him. It was a, a photo finish, right? Devinder, Rosa, Milena, JB87, Bharat, you, lots of you got you guys all got it. Alash got it. Gabriella, good for you. Okay, so Medea, you're the champion. And the the problem obviously here is your is possessive, like your house, your brother, your fault. <laughs> That's not very nice, but it's all your fault. Um, what you want here instead is you are what you are, what you're going to do. Okay, little tiny mistake but we make it all the same. All right. Good stuff, gang. Um, oh yeah, you're talking about the mistake of the week I put on Facebook? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go on Facebook and, and answer that one soon. It, that one's a tough one. So, yeah, I mean, this, this is a minor mistake, but sometimes it can cause misunderstandings for sure. Okay, so let me pop out here. Let me go full screen, green screen. All right. So guys, that's, that's it for today. As I said, next week, um, back to Friday as regular. 
okay? I'll be, I'll be here as usual, um, and I will be continuing the lesson on indirect questions, okay? Because we're going to talk about if and whether, we're going to talk about the, the grammatical structure of, of the indirect question, okay? <laughs> yeah, some people are saying, Madiha, that, that, that your internet speed is, is, is faster than theirs. Yeah, maybe. Life is unfair. What are you going to do? Okay. So, um, yeah, until next week, guys, keep, keep practicing your English. Keep making mistakes and, and learning from them. Um, thank you for coming on, uh, on Thursday. Thanks for changing your own schedule around to, to accommodate me and my needs. <laughs> right? And, uh, and keep coming back. Tell your friends. Um, keep watching the other, the other classes and uh, all, all the videos that we still have on, on the playlist of past classes. And we'll see you here next time. Have a great weekend. Well, have a nice Friday first. Yeah. Uh, have a good weekend. Have a good week. And we will see you here next time. If you're new to the class, hopefully we'll see you again. And all those regulars, um, yeah, I look forward to, to seeing you next time, okay? Uh, okay, take care, guys. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. Also, if you want the full experience of being a student in a smart live class with things like homework and teacher feedback, follow the link and become a premium subscriber. Also, if you want to see more videos from this class, check out our playlist.